Good morning and welcome back to White Mountain Today here on White Mountain TV 16. Joining us uh, in the studio today are two pizzas. <laughs> we have a cheese pizza and we have a veggie pizza. A veggie pizza. Yeah. And uh, we'll be digging into these in just a moment. And also joining us here is the maker <laughs> of these pizzas, Beth Cardadona from the Spaghetti Shed. How are you, Beth? I'm good, Rob. How about you? I'm doing very well. Good. Is your mouth watering? It is. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, we're ready to uh, dig into some pizzas. Chris is going, oh, pizzas. <laughs> He's going to zoom in on this. So so you got up at 4 a.m. to make pizzas for us. No, uh, not not quite not that quite. early. No, no. So, I can, we can make pizzas pretty quickly. So. Well, look I, at that. That's uh, the veggie pizza. That's yep. We do, uh, the reason I brought these is we talk about the food a lot when we do the show and everybody knows we have great pasta and homemade sauce and home baked bread. Everybody talks about the bread. But a lot of people, even though we've been in business for over 35 years um, and for over 30 of that, we've been doing the spaghetti and the pizza. Right. A lot of people do not realize what our pizza is like. You know, we all have our favorite pizzas. Right. Um, right. And, and, but people come in and they try it and, or you know they might have family in town and say well, you know what's easy oh, Joseph's is close let's try their pizza right and the next time they come in they say wow you know we never had your pizza before we can't believe how great it is and we do you know we do all the standards but we also have some really wild flavors I'm constantly mixing stuff up you know 35 years of eating pasta and pizza you try to right, come up with some yeah. new combinations you know so we have one that's a Greek shrimp pizza and it's basically like a spinach feta pizza but we add black olives and sauteed shrimp and then put a little bit of Greek dressing on it. That sounds yummy. Yeah, then we do a Caesar salad pizza which is one of my favorites. Just a white pizza but when it comes out of the oven you put a nice chilled crispy Caesar salad on top of it. It's kind of a knife and fork pizza. It's yeah. tough to pick that up and eat it. But I've been making myself a BLT pizza lately. Um, that's not on the menu, but I can, I can, people can come up with any combination. Right. If it's not on the menu, they can say, hey, can you put this on a pizza? Yup, if we have it, we can put it on a right. pizza. So. Well, that, that's awesome. And, the, and you, you, you say a knife and fork pizza. I actually really like knife and fork pizza. Yeah. You know, I yeah. like, because then you know there's all that extra stuff yeah. on it. And uh, it, it just makes it that much more enjoyable. Sometimes so. there's nothing like just a plain cheese pizza. Right. But I hardly ever go there. I'm way more likely to have that much stuff on my pizza. Now, do you do them in two sizes? Or do you no, use only one. one. We size? only do one so size. So the nice personal pizza. Yeah. That's the great thing about it. Yeah, and it's we have a conveyor oven. So, so if people want them crispy, we pop them back in right. to get them crispy. The great thing about a conveyor oven is for the most part, the pizzas are very consistent. So if you get a pizza today and then you come back in two months, the pizza is probably pretty much going to be the same. Right, because, which is great. Because the cooking time never changes. You know, so if you want it lightly cooked, we just push it a little further in to start. <laughs> if you want it crispy, we push it back in the back and let it cook a little bit more. So it so. goes for a little ride there. It's kind it of does. like it a, a you know, ride. pizza yep. bobsled. Yep. There, you know? yep. So. Well, that's, that's very awesome. Well, we're going to dig into this uh, very soon. And So what's going on at uh, Joseph's besides uh, the pizza? Well, actually, <clears throat> right now for folks, I just want to let everybody know we're closed. Uh, last night was our last night until the day after Christmas. And I always close at this time of year. Um, it's a busy time for folks in general. Um, and I have staff members that have kids, so they have concerts and they have <laughs> pa school parties, you know what I mean? And I have a f uh, one of my staff members is a teacher, so she's really busy this time sure. of year. And, you know, there's, there's family travel, there's all kinds of stuff going on, and it's, it's just so busy for my staff. I just say, okay, everybody has this week off. Right, you know? that's awesome. And because awesome. I think it's important. This is a really family-oriented time of year, you know, Thanksgiving to Christmas. Um, and I think it also makes us reflect on the things that are important. And family to me is the important thing. Absolutely. So hopefully this gives them time to get their shopping done and, you know, go to the Christmas shows and do all that stuff. And, and um, then we're ready to go. I was going to say, then you're ready to go. Christmas, day after Christmas. Yeah, we're ready to go. We'll be open every night at Christmas Vacation Week. Um, we're closed on New Year's Day. 
uh, which is typically a day would be, we would be closed anyway because right. we close Tuesdays and Wednesdays usually in the winter. We'll, we will be open the Tuesday New Year's Eve day, yep. but we will be closed New Year's Day. Okay. And then we go back to our regular schedule where we're open Thursday through Monday um, and closed Tuesday, Wednesday. And my Monday nights are my Dine to Donate right. nights. Right. And those are booking pretty quickly. I think I might have one Monday open in January. Um, so that means I have three three booked or four booked in January. That's awesome. Everything in February is booked. Um, February vacation, we're open every night. Um, and then, so now we're booking our Dine to Donate Monday nights in March. And then when we get to April um, and the beginning of May, the schedule switches up a little bit more. Each year it's a little different depending on where I'm going, right. <laughs> you know, um, how much staff I have, what they need to be doing. Um, but, but through the winter, my hours are very steady. And then once we get to Father's Day, we go every night. For the whole summer. So. Can't believe we're talking Father's Day I know, already. I know. I can't, wow, I can't believe jumped, we're talking we've, 2020 already. We've jumped ahead uh, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. So um, now, of course, you're located in, in such a great location, very convenient mm -hmm. um, for people to find. And, um, and I lost my train of thought there. Um, so how do you describe where you are? Um, I usually say that we're conveniently located <laughs> um, halfway between Storyland and Anatash. Um, but when I'm giving directions, it's about a mile and a half west on Route 302 from the Glen intersection. So if you just stay on 302, you're going to go by it. You're going to see it. Yeah. And uh, we just saw that there on the on the screen of you know how it looks. It's such a great building, and oh, you've, a, done, you've done you've done so much character. stuff. You've done so much <laughs> stuff to it recently, yeah. which really yeah. uh, has added both to the outside and to the inside, and. And adding that your bar waiting area yeah, is really that, a nice That addition. was a yeah. great decision. That That's just made it really comfortable for people when they're waiting. And, you know, the, the fact that they, they there's more places for people to sit, that they can more comfortably get a drink, whether it be a soda or a beer, you know. Um, and it, it's it's been great. We use that space. And, and that's where we set up when we do the Dine to Donates. We set up the raffles up there. So it's just, it's just given us a lot more space. It's the, it's more welcoming when you walk in to the to the front too. It's just you know yeah yeah. And a lot of people that haven't been in are like, wow, you know, it looks so different. It looks so great. So that's true. Now of course, you know, if people can't come in to eat, you have different options. I do. That. Well, we do takeout. So right. um, the the only thing I will say with takeout that is tough for people is when we get very busy in house, we we have to shut takeout off for a while. Yeah. Um, the kitchen just can't handle it. You know, when, when we have a full waiting room and we have every table going, there's there's 13 to 15 slips hanging in front of the, the cooks. And the, literally there is no more room to hang slips. And when it's like that, we just, we, to, to, to serve people that have waited 45 minutes to sit down at a table, we can't also be doing the takeout. Absolutely, but but yeah. for the most part, particularly in the winter, we, we hardly ever have to shut it down in the winter. Maybe one or two times during February vacation week. But yeah. but um, in the summer, it's, it's tough. Um, but we also, and I'm working on this, it's a work in progress always because they never seem to have enough time. I have a freezer in the lobby and um, I'm actually in the, I just made a bunch of sauce um, and I'm going to be packaging that, getting that freezer stocked. So when we reopen after Christmas, we'll have everything's frozen, so it's not like you can you can take the lasagna home, you know, stick it in the oven for half an hour and have it ready. There's a little bit of planning involved. Right. The sauces, on the other hand, because they can go in the microwave, you can put them in the microwave to get them thawed a little bit, take them out, put them in a pot. You can inside of a half an hour have the sauce ready to go. Terrific. Um, so, but I'll have I'll have um, lasagnas packed, and I'll have uh, meatballs packed, sausages packed. I'll be stocking that fridge. So during that Christmas week, if people don't want to come in, they've got a bunch of family at the house, but they want Joseph's spaghetti. They can cook their spaghetti, but they can come and get the sauce. And people can always order stuff ahead of time, too. Um, I've got people ordering food um, that I'll get ready and they'll pick up yeah. um, before Christmas. You know, I, I live above the restaurant, yeah. so I can be, even though the restaurant's closed, I'm still working. I'm right. still getting stuff done for folks. And um, I've, I've got the bakery business as well. 
So uh, I just came off Thanksgiving, did a ton of pies, and now bet, going into yeah. Christmas. It's not quite as busy with the baking at Christmas time, but I, I am available always to, to, I already have some pie orders. and Oh, that's so, great. So, yeah, yeah. That's great. So, so I'm always busy. You're all, you, know, you, you, are, I, you, you know. are, Beth, you are always busy. <laughs> And of course, if people want more information about Joseph's, what's the best way, best um, way, best they, way to find out? If they Google Joseph's Spaghetti Shed, there's a bunch of stuff that comes up. Um, I don't have technically have a website, but if you go to josephspaghettished.blogspot, there's a blog there. That has my menu on it. Um, but there are other sites where my menus are. So if you just Google Joseph's Spaghetti Shed, um, the best way to get in touch with me, if you want to talk to me about ordering food or, or anything, is to email me. Um, the restaurant phone, particularly when we're closed, I'm not going to get messages. Right. Yeah. But if you email me, I will I will get those emails, and that is the fastest way to get in touch with me and to get a response from me. Um, and that's Joseph's Spaghetti Shed at gmail dot com. Um, and you, they, people can email me there too about pies and cakes. But if they if they're specifically looking for that, they can also email the Sugar Maker Bakery at gmail dot com. So, and I have Facebook pages for both those things. Absolutely. Too. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Beth, thank you so much for coming by and wow. uh, and uh, joining us. I think that uh, I think that I should officially eat some pizza. What <laughs> Hopefully, do you think? they're still warm enough. That, oh, yeah. you know. <laughs> pizza. Mm. I know. Cold pizza for breakfast. You can is give it a yeah. try, Perfect. Rob. Oh, yeah. Mm. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean. I can't wait back here. <laughs> oh, you're on the other side of the door, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> Delicious. Well, good. I'm yeah, glad you enjoyed it. That's great. Thanks yeah. for getting up at four. Oh, oh, no problem. <laughs> My pleasure. I actually was awake at four, but. <laughs> so, Beth, thanks so much for coming by. Well, thank you for and, having uh, me, And definitely check out the uh, Spaghetti Shed right there in Glen, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll see you soon. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you. We'll be back here in a minute on White Mountains Today.